Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at how to graph an absolute value equation. To do that, we're going to start by setting up an xy table. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up with some values for x that we're going to put into this function and then figure out what value for y we would get when we put these numbers in for x. Now, here's a note about absolute value. When I put negative 2 inside the absolute value, it stays a negative 2. We don't take the absolute value of a number until after we've done anything inside the absolute value sign. So think of the absolute value as a grouping symbol, just like parentheses. So we're going to do inside of the grouping symbol first, and then take the absolute value of it. So putting negative 2 in there does not make it a positive 2. So when I put negative 2 in here for x, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Now I take the absolute value of that, and I get a positive 3 as my answer. When I put negative 1 in there, Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Now I take the absolute value of negative 2, and that makes it a positive 2. When I put 0 in here, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value of that is a positive 1. When I put 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Now, a little note about absolute value. Again, if I put 2 in here, 2 minus 1 is 1. Now, some people have trained in their heads that the absolute value of a number means to take the opposite of it. So if I have, if I put 2 in here and 2 minus 1 is 1, some people think that the absolute value of 1 is negative 1. Well, that's wrong. When I first taught absolute value in middle school, what I would tell students is that absolute value is kind of like a car wash. When you drive a dirty car through a car wash, it's obviously going to come out clean. So if you put a negative number and run it through absolute value, it's going to come out positive. Now, if you drive a clean car through a car wash, obviously it's never going to come out dirty. It's going to stay clean. So if you run an absolute value number, or I'm sorry, if you run a positive number through absolute value, it's not going to come out negative. It's going to stay positive. So in other words, absolute value, it doesn't take the opposite. What it does is it cleans it up. It always makes it positive. So when I put 2 in here, the absolute value of 2 is, or 2 minus 1 is 1, and the absolute value of 1, it stays 1. Let's just do one more number so we can see more of our graph. Um, if I put 3 in here, 3 minus 1 is 2. The absolute value of 2 stays 2. So now let's graph this. So negative 2, positive 3 would be here. Negative 1, positive 2. 0, 1. 1, 0. 2, 1. And 3, 2. So when I go to graph this, this is what our graph is going to look like. Now here's the thing about absolute value. Absolute value functions are always going to look like a giant V. So that's an easy way to remember it, is the V from value gives away what the graph should look like. So if you start to graph a uh, absolute value function, and if your graph just looks like what I have boxed in the purple there and you don't see anything else, well, that means that we're not seeing the whole picture. That means there's more to it that we have to find. So make sure you remember that because sometimes students will start graphing and they'll see, let's see if I can do this. So they'll get a graph like that and they'll just stop and they'll say, oh, well, this one must be a straight line. But the problem is, obviously, it's absolute value. There should be a V in there. So you just have to pick more numbers. Sometimes you just have to guess. Sometimes you try picking some uh, positive numbers and see if you get that V in there somewhere. Sometimes you have to pick some negative numbers and see where the V is at. But there's always going to be whether that there's always going to be a V, whether it points upwards or downwards. Uh, so just make sure you always look for that when you're graphing. Okay, let's look at this last example here. This one's a little different from the previous one. Notice in the previous one, inside of absolute value, we had some operations. We had to take the absolute value of x minus 1. We had to take the x minus 1 first and then apply the absolute value. This one, there's no operations inside the absolute value sign. So that tells me that I first take the absolute value of the number and then add 2. So when I put negative 2 inside of here, there's nothing I can do to it. So I have to take the absolute value of it makes it positive. So a positive 2, now we add 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Put negative 1 in here. The absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1. 1 plus 2 gives me 3. Put 0 in here. The absolute value of 0 is still 0, so 0 plus 2 is 2. 
Again, when you're doing these graphs, also don't just assume that there's going to be a pattern and just try to follow that pattern. Because some people would say, oh, maybe it goes 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then they go back up again. That's wrong. So if I put 1 in here, the absolute value of 1 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3 now. When I put 2 in here, the absolute value of 2 is 2, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So let's look at our graph. Negative 2, positive 4. Negative 1, positive 3, 0, 2. 1, 3, and 2, 4. And there's your absolute value. So hopefully you got a better idea of what the absolute value function should look like. And a key here is to make sure you remember that when you put a number inside of absolute value, it doesn't become positive. It's not until we do any simplifying inside the absolute value and we take it out of the absolute value that it becomes positive. So good luck on the graphing portion of your assignment.